Okay, this video is going to be a continuation of the video that you saw um, two times ago. It's not immediately the previous video. What I'm going to do is continue that example and want to show what happens with the new unbiased S squared. So I have the um, paint file up here. Uh, the image that we did on our example of the maximum likelihood estimator for the variance being biased and notice I've crossed out that title title to emphasize this is the same stuff but we're doing a new video here and we saw that this one was biased but we also in the last inter video introduced a new unbiased um, sample variance so if I let s squared be 1 over n minus 1, and it's that minus 1 that makes us unbiased, times the sum from i equals 1 to n of xi minus x bar squared, then this actually ends up being unbiased. Okay, So I'm going to go through and modify things here and show you that that's the case. This is similar to what I do in example 4.4.6 in the text. Well, before, I just had 1 over n here, and n was 2, since I had two observations of a Bernoulli random variable. So I was multiplied by 1 half before, and now I don't need 1 half, I need 1. 1 over 2 minus 1 is 1. So I am going to erase those. Let's see here. Erase that 1 half, and erase this 1 half, and I don't even need those parentheses. Whoops, didn't want to quite erase that much. Okay, so the one half is gone now. Now I just need to go down and fix what I have here. Um, my s squareds, no longer do they have a one half, so instead of having a 0.25, everything's going to be twice as big, because I didn't multiply it by a half this time. So zero is still going to be zero, but these are still going to be are going to turn into 0.5. They're twice as big, since I'm not multiplying by a half. I'm adding up x1 minus x bar squared and x2 minus x bar squared. Okay, so let me just redo this section right here. So I'll erase what I have. And since I wrote crooked, I have to erase three times, it turns out. I guess four times. And I'm going to do the expectation of the new s squared. So this is the new s squared. Remember that from now on in the course, when we talk about s squared, we're talking about the sample variance where we divide by n minus 1. Okay. Well, all of these options are equally likely. Make sure my pen's the right size. Yep. And I have that the expectation of s squared, well, there's a one half probability I'm going to get zero. In the previous, when I went through this example first time, I had it times one fourth twice. And then there's a one half probability I'm going to get 0.5. And both of those ways are acceptable. I can either multiply each of these by one-fourth or pair these zeros and pair the 0.5s together. Either way, you're going to end up with 0.5 times one-half, which is 0.25. And we know that the variance for a Bernoulli random variable is p times 1 minus p, so that's 0.5 times 1 minus 0.5, and that's 0.25. These are equal, and that implies that we didn't prove it overall, but we proved for this example, um, s squared is an unbiased estimator. of the variance, sigma squared. Okay, We fixed it. This used to be 0 0.125. Now it's 0 0.25, what it's supposed to be, the actual value of the variance. Now what I want to go on and do as a last step is to show you that unfortunately the standard deviation <laughs> ends up being biased. It, this this is just one of those things where you pull your hair out. <laughs> you thought you fixed it, but you really didn't. And it turns out you can't fix both of these. So the standard deviation is just the square root of variance. So it makes sense that if we're going to estimate the variance this way, we may estimate the standard deviation by just taking the square root. So I'll have this square root of 0, which is 0 there. I'll have the square root of 0.5 and the square root of 0.5, and then we'll have 0. Okay. So, if I look at the expectation of s, 
Well, there's a 50% probability it's going to be 0, and a 50% probability it's going to be the square root of 0 0.5. So we have 0 times 50% plus the square root of 0 0.5 times 50%. So that's 0 0.5 to the power of 3 halves. And let's see, let me get my calculator here so I can get a decimal approximation. Point 0.5 to the power of 1.5 is about 0.3536. On the other hand, um, sigma is the square root of sigma whoa, so where it is sigma squared. So if sigma squared was 0.25, we have the square root of 0.25, and the square root of 0.25 is 0.5. So these are different, and that implies S is a biased, whoops, is a, I think after making these videos I'd learn how to talk and write at the same time, but sometimes it just doesn't work out. S is a biased estimator for sigma. And unfortunately, that is just something we had to live with. There are some ways to fix it, although it's not clear conceptually whether I should make the variance or the standard deviation unbiased. Okay, The norm is to make the variance unbiased, and mainly the reason for that is is because it's easier. <laughs> um, it doesn't matter what the distribution is, we know a way to make an unbiased estimator of the variance, and it's this guy. Whereas for the standard deviation, we don't have a nice uniform way to fix it that works on all distributions. For particular distributions, there are ways to do it, but not on all of them. Okay, so here's an example showing that indeed we fixed the bias and the variance. Um, however, in doing so, we did not fix any bias in the standard deviation, and we have an unbiased estimator for the variance, but we still have a biased estimator for standard deviation.